Coming to this now, the Sensomeiwa murder trial is back in court this morning. Police data analyst Lambria Stain is expected to return to the witness stand. But just last week, to give you context, he testified uh, that one of the accused communicated with Meiwa's then girlfriend, singer Kelukumalo. ENC reporter Mangoba Mkunu is watching the case and joins us with the very latest uh, this morning. Mangoba, a very warm good morning to you, colleague. Perhaps let's uh, go back to some of the damning, you know, allegations and Revelations that link Kelukumalo to the case. Well, Dumelo, what we understand from the evidence that was led last week by the state is that there were two calls that were seemingly made to Kelo Kumalo by one of the accused in this matter, and that is accused number five, this Duli. And we understand that these calls had happened, uh, the first one, on the 2nd of August. And this particular call, we understand, was made at a tower in Kimberley in the Northern Cape. And this call lasted for less than uh, two minutes. Uh, we also understand that there was another call call that was made on the 15th of October and this is just days uh, before Senzo Meiwa was shot and killed uh, at uh, Kumalo's home in Phosphorus and that particular call we understand uh, was uh, noted from a tower uh, that was in Limpopo it too lasted uh, less than a minute uh, uh, in fact less than two minutes in fact it was a minute and a half we understand according to the evidence that was led by Lambertus Stain. Uh, so there does seem to be a link as far as one of the suspects in this matter is concerned uh, with Kelly Kumalo. But also we understand that, uh, you know, uh, prior to this, there's there'd also been uh, communication between the suspects uh, themselves uh, as far as this matter is concerned. So it does certainly raise a lot of eyebrows as to what really was uh, the discussion that Kelly Kumalo would have had with this particular accused uh, when it uh, comes to this particular matter. And, uh, you know, the state, I think we're still going to hear exactly where they are taking uh, this particular uh, evidence uh, and uh, perhaps what it is that they want to show uh, with the evidence that has been led so far. But certainly damning evidence that seems to suggest that Kelly Kumalo was either in communication or had spoken uh, to this particular accused on uh, possibly something that may have to do with this case. But let's take a listen to the bite uh, from that uh, uh, evidence that was led in court and what came out of it. During my analysis, I discovered that Kelly Kumalo with a number 278270044358 received a call from Ntuli Nkani with the number 277 just read that first name. Fiso Kulu. Fiso Kulu. Good And if written in brackets 5, what does that indicate? It, it means a, a suspect 5. And the call was on the 15th of October 2014 at 1733.57. And the time of the duration of the call was 98 seconds, a minute and a half, more or less. And then the other part is the same as 277-3305-9202, which belong to suspect number five. So, Mangawa, then remind us of also the evidence brought forward in terms of how the suspects were also linked. Well, from what we heard in court, Dumelo, it does appear that these suspects had known each other uh, prior to this incident uh, occurring. And what we uh, heard from the evidence of Lamberta Stain is that, in fact, accused number five, Fiso Wilhelm Duli, had made uh, several contacts uh, with the other accused, uh, the four of the other accused, uh, that being accused number one, number two, as well as accused number three. So there does seem that there were phone calls uh, that were made between these particular suspects, uh, in fact, were understand that from one of the numbers that suspect number three, uh, uh, Toby Simunube, had saved uh, was the number of accused number five. And in that number, he had saved that particular number as Mfoga Kumalo, even though his surname, we know, is Nduli. So it does seem that there was some link 
uh, between these uh, suspects as far as this matter is concerned. And of course, the state's saying that the crucial or the key uh, suspect as far as what this evidence shows is accused number three and five that seem to have had more contact than the other uh, suspects that are linked in this matter. But I think also pertinent uh, what we heard in court on Friday was the issue of a sum swap that was done on one of Senzo Meiwa's phone numbers. Uh, in fact, the phone number that we know uh, he was using at that time and what uh, the, the evidence had shown is that in fact just a day after uh, Senzo Meiwa was killed that sim swap was done on the phone it was inserted on a, a device that you know was owned by David Matebula who himself was a former soccer player and there were several calls about eight calls that were made uh, from that particular device uh, to Kelly Kumalo on the 27th of October we also heard a possible link uh, that the state has brought as far as the suspects are concerned you recall to Melo that uh, in this evidence we've heard uh, from the version of those that were inside the house that there were intruders that came into the house and one of those intruders was light in complexion he had a protruding eyes and he had dreadlocks and this is the intruder that they say was carrying a firearm at the time and from what we understand from the evidence is that this is the intruder that might have possibly shot and killed Senzo Meiwa. And on Friday, we heard links uh, uh, that the state had brought, as far as the evidence is concerned, when they uh, sp spoke about the evidence that they'd collected from accused number three's phone, Toby Simnube. And that evidence uh, seems to suggest that a day just before uh, Senzo Meiwa was shot, um, Toby Simnube had dreadlocks at the time. And from the evidence of those that have come to court, it does seem to fit the description of one of the intruders uh, that had come into the house. But perhaps let's take a listen to Melo uh, to what uh, Stain had to say about the links between these suspects. Suspect number five did my contact with suspect number three. That number of suspect number five also got contact with suspect number two. The suspect number five also the contact with suspect number one. Is there an indication as to who the central figure is, who the central person is? It's not possible to determine. We can, I can just determine that the, the, the suspects in front of the court knows each other. Yes. They did talk to each other. And before I then let you go, colleague, what time can we expect court to begin this morning? Well, we're expecting court to start at 10 a.m. this morning, and what we're expecting in court, of course, is the cross-examination of Lamberta Stain. Uh, he had left evidence uh, last week and the state concluding uh, leading of evidence uh, from him. So we're expecting the different lawyers uh, representing the defense to start their cross-examination. It's not going to be easy given that the evidence that we've heard in court is quite technical, it's quite specific. So they really have a tough job ahead to try and poke holes and perhaps uh, also uh, discredit some of the evidence that has been led. So that is expected to take place when this court resumes at 10 this morning. All right, we'll be with them and we'll be sure to come back to you as soon as uh, the uh, trial begins and continues uh, with Mangawan Kunu uh, this morning as our reporter watching through those developments for us right here on ENCM.